Greetings folks, in this video I'm very happy to be having a look at some MKS servos. MKS servos are among the highest quality servos you can possibly buy these days. Uh, they are not designed for your simple little park flying foamies. They're really designed for planes that require high precision, uh, high strength, light weight and extreme durability and the price reflects that of course they're probably the most expensive servos i've ever laid my hands on mks that's mark star servo tech uh, contacted me and uh, asked if i'd look like to look at some of the servos and uh, i said well i don't really have any planes that are suitable for it apart from a discus launch glider but they said oh yeah okay we'll send you some of the uh, uh, the lighter servos in the glider range specifically designed for discus launch gliders so uh, i have my discus launch glider over behind me there when i was first setting that up uh, the servos that everyone seemed to be using were diamond d47s um, i still I still have some Diamond D47s in the body there, but I'm going to swap them over to the MKS. Now, the Diamond D47s back then were, were quite expensive, and I bought four of them, put them in the ailerons and the body. Uh, the ones in the body are still going well. The, the ones in the ailerons are stripped very quickly. When I was learning to fly my discus launch glider, uh, they're really not suitable for aileron servos, I found out. There's just too much jarring on the uh, ailerons when you have a... A dodgy landing but now it's time to upgrade to something that is seriously high quality generally mks servos are their cnc aluminium case some of them have hall effect position sensors and they seem to be used by a lot of uh, display pilots at shows uh, and acrobatic pilots and really really high performance situations so the two servos they sent me to have a look at are the hs75 uh, and we'll go through the specs. We'll have a look at the website and go through the specs in, in a, a bit of detail so I can explain what they're all about. But the HS75 is specifically designed uh, as a slim servo for wings, uh, powerful, rigid, and extremely precise, which is exactly what you need for a discus launch glider. More so than any other plane, I would say, because uh, they are sort of slow, gentle, precise flyers, and you need millimetre half millimeter adjustments of, of control surfaces to get the best out of them and the other servo is for the tail surface is the hv70 a tiny tiny little servo and this one boasts high holding torque which is perfect for use with uh, pull spring tail surface setups where you have uh, a spring loaded tail surface that is uh, positioned by pulling on a spring so there's sort of constant tension on the servo arm and these little HV70s are specifically designed uh, for that situation. It's interesting that uh, you don't see many reviews for MKS servos at all. I think they're mainly using old forms of marketing, like uh, sponsoring teams. I've got a MKS team lanyard there and uh, a groovy cap, which I will be wearing. That's a really good cap. And I've got an MKS hoodie as well. Oh, there it is behind me. Uh, it's a little bit tight for me, so it'll keep me warm, I guess. So, yeah, as I was saying, you, you don't find any reviews on YouTube or Facebook or anything for MKS. It's all word of mouth, uh, team demonstrations, things like that. So maybe they're uh, sort of venturing into modern forms of marketing. So let's open them up and have a closer look, and then we'll go over to the website and have a look at the specs. So here's the two little boxes. There's a lot of information on the box, which is good. Uh, it gives you the talk, the actual weight, uh, the features, and more stuff on the back there. It's all very good. Let's open it up anyway. So here's the HS75. Beautiful little aluminium casing. Nice little curved edge there. So neat. Very well designed. Hall sensor. 2S LiPo only. These things are uh, high voltage, so you can run them direct from a 2S LiPo. The metal spline there. And the servo arms. We get a, a little semi, a little cam shaped one couple of longer servo arms and a, a shorter one and all the uh, nuts and screws to mount them little servo guide as well they keep stressing not to force to rotate or twist rapidly on the servo by hand so 
Um, I'm going to have to change my practices, just sort of forcing arms into position. That's probably never a good practice, but uh, with uh, this, the cheapo servos that I've been using, it doesn't really matter so much, I don't think. Lots of good technical information there. These are high-speed digital, so working frequency can be up to 333 hertz. Cordless motor, metal alloy gears, 7.9 grams. Working voltage, 4 to 8.4 volts. And torque, 2.7 kilograms centimetres at 4.8 volts, right up to 4 kilograms centimetres at 8.2 volts. That's a lot of power from a little servo. Beautiful. 23 millimetres long, 7.5 millimetres wide, and height 16.1 millimetres. Very cool. So they are going to be beautiful in my ailerons. So now let's look at the HV70. These ones will go in the body for spring pull tail surfaces. Don't know what the elegant way is to get these things out. Uh, push from the bottom, that's what we'll do. So same thing, little MKS servo user guide. And look at the size of that little baby. And we get the cam-shaped servo arm and a, a little one as well, with the bolts and screws, of course. Compare that to the other servo. I should uh, bring out a normal 9-gram servo to show you the the size comparison, but uh, they are absolutely tiny. So the HV70. Torque, 1.5 kilogram centimetre at 3.7 volts. So this one can use a, a 1S LiPo. Uh, up to 3.1 kilograms uh, kilogram centimetres at 8.2 volts. Coreless motor frequency, 333 hertz again. Metal alloy gear, 5.4 uh, grams. And the size... 18.6 millimetres long, 7 millimetres wide, total of 16.7 millimetres, including the, the motor that sticks out the bottom. Now, just for fun, I thought I'd compare it to one of the cheapest and crappiest servos possible. It's the Tower Pro uh, or knockoff Tower Pro uh, SG90. You can see, oh, it is uh, a third of the size of that. Okay, let's go and have a look at the MKS website. Uh, and there are a stack of different sorts of uh, servos available. Let's look at the glider series here. And we get this list with all the specs, and then down below are all the different uh, servos. And if we go to, first of all, a HV70 there, dimensions diagram, you see the prices there. And, of course, the good thing about these servos is you can get replacement parts for every little bit. And locally for me in Australia, uh, Dave's Toys for Big Boys is the place to get them. They're the Australian dollars. You can see the uh, price is pretty impressive. This is the relevant information here. Um, smaller than the lamented SD100 and D47, which I am familiar with, and KST X06. Undoubtedly the best small glider servo available in 2022. Well, it's 2022. Three, and I'm pretty sure that is still the case. Uh, the HV70 is a low, medium, high voltage servo as it works on 1S and 2S LiPos as well as 4.8 to 6 volt NIMH batteries. So yeah, great for, for motorless gliders. And it includes the pulley type output disc. Oh, that's that little uh, cam shaped uh, servo arm, I think making it ideal for pull spring tail connections, which is exactly what I'm going to use it for. CNC aluminium alloy case for rigidity and crash resistance, and the gears are pre-loaded to remove all slop, which is uh, very important for high precision uses. Extreme reliability and performance uh, of these servos makes them very suitable for film and motion picture industry special effects departments. Oh yes, yeah, that would make sense. Very cool. So let's have a look at the HS75 there, all the dimensions, Hall Effect Sensor. Again, you can get spare parts. And again, on Dave's Toys Store, Hall Effect Position Sensor for maximum resolution and reliability. And uh, a lot of power out of a little servo. You can get uh, vertical tabs or horizontal tabs for different mounting positions. 
Uh, this is going in a wing, so it's going to have the uh, flat tabs like that, the vertical tabs, so the servo can lie flat. Oh, I didn't mention operating speeds, yeah, so 0.143 seconds per 60 degrees, no load. Uh, 4.8 volts and up at 8.4 volts, 0 0.087 seconds per 60 degrees. Pretty incredible specs. Anyway, uh, it is time to mount them in my discus launch glider uh, and see how they actually feel. I have a couple of models that I can use these little servos in. This is the Flight Point Maverick. Nice and uh, lightweight and uh, accurate little model. It will benefit from the wonderful MKS servos. Pull spring system in the fuselage, so that's all going to be good. But the glider I'm going to work on is the uh, my old Hobby King V2 discus launch glider. This will suit the MKS servos perfectly. So I'm just taking the plug off so that I can thread the servo wire through and uh, just going to glue it into the existing servo pocket, wrapping in masking tape so I can pull it out later on if I want to, and just epoxying it into place. That should hold nice and securely. Now pulling the old Diamond D47s out of the fuselage and uh, I have to work out how to fit these in now. They're kind of uh, a different shape but a couple of little plastic blocks uh, screwing in sideways to them seem to work okay. I was going to try and use the little cams, but they didn't give me enough throws, so uh, I'm using the shorter servo arms, and uh, that's looking good. And this shows the value of these servos. Beautiful, tiny, accurate movements are possible. Big movements for the brakes. Tiny little movements for reflex, and uh, perfect centering every time this is why you pay the money okay time to go out and test it